the heart of what it means to be a neighborhood church is not about the geography of the location, although that's important and we'll talk about that. The heart of it is God's people loving and serving their neighbors for the sake of the gospel. That's the heart of the neighborhood church vision. We think what that will look like is multiple campuses, not a giant box. But the heart of the neighborhood church vision is not like, oh, let's, 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 let's grab that church because it's financially good or exciting and call it neighborhood church. That's not what's in my heart. What's in my heart is our people increasingly grasp the vision to reach their neighbors for Christ, to serve them and to love them. And that will produce multiplication of churches. Acquiring that property, acquiring their debt, which right now is about a half a million dollars. We get everything there for about a half a million dollars. The property itself is worth three times that much, maybe four times that much. Uh, but the facility is woefully lacking to be a quality facility for that neighborhood that we're trying to reach. It's going to take building a small worship center. It's going to take fixing the children's space. And if we do that, we can move our hand-in-hand -hand preschool ministry from our East Campus to the Mill Creek Campus, very close to where all those children live. Uh, and if we can move hand-in-hand -hand over there, we can expand Shepherd's Heart at East Campus, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Another part of must-have is right here at this campus. Growing to serve second phase needs to include this campus. The first thing we need to take care of here is expanding and improving our nursery space. Second thing we need to do at this campus, must do, is up above our heads here. Uh, some of you have probably been in here when it's been leaking, raining inside the building. This building has leaked since about the second year that we had it in existence. It's got significant design flaws on the roof of this building including our, uh, I think I'm saying this right, our air handlers up there also are at the place in their life they need to be replaced. Uh, that alone that none of you ever see, but require, that's the infrastructure of this building, that's, that's like a half a million dollars of work up there. We would move also uh, our, some of our offices, our children's ministry offices up here, we'd like to move them down to the lower level, close to the children's space down there, that liberates that space to, to expand our nurseries. So it's all, all these dominoes are all related. Now, um, what we'd uh, like to have not a must have, but a like to have in this campus is addressing this room right here. Carpet it, make it a worship center, still, still possible to use for multi-purpose purposes, but it wouldn't be a gym anymore, it'd be a worship center. Expanding the stage, doing some things inside here with acoustics and all that stuff. We'd like to, but that's, that, we, we, we've come to terms that that's not a must have, that's a like to have. We can, we're all used to it. Visitors don't find it very comfortable, which is an issue, but we'd like to have that. Growing to Serve 2 should also at the East Campus deal with Shepherd's Heart. That ministry has been exploding ever since we gave it its own space. Uh, this is a gospel ministry, not just handing out food. They see it as ministering to people full range in the whole scope of their lives, counseling their finances, sharing Christ with them, and giving them food, and they need space to do that. And so if we acquire, here's the dominoes, if we acquire Mill Creek, if we turn that children's space into a viable children's ministry space and can move hand in hand our preschool from East Campus lower level to there, we liberate space on the lower level of the East Campus to give them the storage space, freezer units, and counseling space all at one time. But we have to do Mill Creek correctly. Our estimates right now that we've received are that we can get, we can acquire uh, Mill Creek, their debt, build out their sanctuary, uh, appropriate children's space, move hand in hand, expend Shepherd's Heart at the East Campus. Uh, expand our nurseries here at this campus for about four and a half to five million, about that same amount we had out there at the South Campus. Our want to have is addressing this room. If we add worship space remodel, this room right here, that would take that final number to the five and a half-ish, moving towards six million to do that. So what we'd really like to do is just start with getting some feedback. This room, it just seemed to me like we ought to have a year or two's worth of worship at Mill Creek and see how that matures before we invest to see what the impact of having people go there has on who's coming here before we start building out in this room again. That's just but, by react. the way, that's, that's exactly why that this landed on the want to have instead of the must have because we believe that one needs to have a viable worship center and we're willing to do that before this because we're kind of used to this. I don't, but I also want to point out though that we get feedback from visitors that this feels like a gym and it feels like it's, that it's not a worship center. What, what kind of uh, ministry staffing is necessary at Mill Creek to be able to make that uh, function and build that kind of ministry base? So if you think about three, three people, campus pastor, worship, and children's. Would they need more? Uh, perhaps, would they need them sooner? We, we hope so, but that, that's uh, like on day one, kind of the, the bare minimum. 
we think we would need that. Uh, it looks like it would take probably a year and a half to two years before it's ready to be occupied. Is um, that about right? No, actually, uh, a year. Well, you know, again, we're, we're in, the, in the realm of speculation here and planning as best we can. Our Aspen uh, tells us that they, that's about a year, 10 months of construction. Um, and so for what we're going to do there. Uh, we would probably, and to your point, Bill, we would, if, if this goes through and if God's in this and our church votes affirmative uh, and we were going to go with this, forward this plan, we would shut that, we would have a last uh, worship service there as Faith Baptist Mill Creek. We would welcome them and celebrate their history into our services at both campuses. And there would be nothing happening there but construction for probably close to a year. The, uh, the goal would be to reopen a year from this fall, to, uh, September to, of 17, uh, as, as the new end, kind of rebirth as something new there. That would give us not only time to do the construction, but also, to Chuck's question, recruit and train and develop the team that's going to go over there, uh, develop the launch plan in its entirety, and envision a group of people that live in that region, not just Mill Creek, but in that region, to make it their church home. So that, yeah, you're right, there'd be a shutdown period. It wouldn't be a year and a half to two years. It'd be about a year. Yeah, I just have a reaction about the Shepherd's Heart thing and as a, as a sometime volunteer, but also with a lot of uh, uh, exposure to the people who work and volunteer in that ministry, this is so needed for us to expand that. Mm -hmm. The facilities as they are that we've put in, in place, have, we've, already, we've already outgrown them. And I, I want to thank you, Brian, for the use of your office to counsel. <laughs> uh, but, but, but really, counseling space for the, for the folks that we do the, um, yeah. the, uh, the financial counseling with would be really, really... Uh, really a wonderful addition to the, to yeah, the project. Was there any kind of study done that um, produced the number of 300 for that sanctuary? Uh, people are reporting uh, Next Generation doesn't really like being in 1,000, 2,000 seat rooms. They like being in smaller venues. Mm -hmm. we've, that's why we've experienced, experimented with smaller venues the last few years. The Worship Cafe is one, Saturday night is the other. Um, so 300 seats gives you that intimate feel. Yeah, you can multiply it and have a, have a, a, a significant ministry. The other thing is that the, the size, the number of seats in your worship center has to match the number of spaces you have for children in the rest of the building, has to match the number of spaces in the, for cars in the parking lot. And as soon as you adjust one, you have to adjust all the others. So that cost number skyrockets further dramatically with each seat you add to this. So they all have to match. So we're trying to match the sanctuary with what else exists there that we could fix up at a minimal, at a, at, the, at a reasonable cost without having add a ton of parking quite yet. There's a peace that comes with knowing that you are not, you, we as a church, are not just thinking of putting another church out there, that we are extending ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's also a peace in knowing that we have a financial responsibility to do that because we can't grow ourselves without a financial commitment. And even with the number that you threw out today, there wasn't shock in my soul. There wasn't a movement of this is too much. There was peace knowing that there's been a lot of thought behind it and every additional cost you put on is there to grow Christ in our community. And that is an acceptance that my soul says is what we need to do and the cost is not extreme. It is something that we can do as a community. This is a phase two um, campaign very much as a matter of fact it, it very much mirrors the last one we just went through if you think about the numbers the proposed level of debt that we would acquire to uh, do the construction and work through the raising of funds and paying off the funds almost exactly as we have over the last three years so it would not come out of existing funds not come out of existing programs this would be a new fundraising campaign okay and we now and for those of you who are just saying, well, let me see the details. We are planning to provide the details. We're working through that. Wanted to hear back from you and still want to hear more back from you um, in terms of your impressions. But uh, come the first week of August, we're going to send out the details of the fundraising campaign, what we expect that would look like. So you'll have plenty of time to review that before we ask you to vote on a proposal uh, on the 21st of August. So we will give you some more of that detail. Uh, but we had, had to hear back from you first is do, do, do we proceed? Is this within our realm of ability? Uh, and so that, that's what this is really wanting to, to discern for this conversation.